Well, hi, and welcome to the Characteristics of uh, Scientific Knowledge, Chapter 2, Lesson 1. Our essential question, so that you are aware, is what investigations do scientific investigations involve? Um, remember, and this is going to be a little bit of a review for us. We know that investigations involve observing, uh, collecting evidence, using logical, I know this is hard for some of you, but using logical reasoning, making those inferences, and sometimes even applying imagination. So what does it mean to make an observation? Uh, you are using one of your more of your senses to gather information. So it's observing then is just the process of gathering that information. And then of course, we're going to use that information to draw conclusions. Now, when we are collecting our evidence, we are collecting data. And that data are facts, figures that are collected during the experiment. When that data is collected in a precise and logical manner, it's called empirical evidence. And so by definition then, empirical evidence is data and observations that have been collected through the process. And then of course that data and those observations help us explain what's going on. All scientific investigations have to involve collecting empirical evidence. Now, logical reasoning. We collect that data, we look at our figures, we look for patterns that help to explain things, and then using logic and reason, we can draw conclusions. Okay, inferences, which I know you all love to do. Inferring means explaining observations, but again, in a logical manner. It does not mean guessing wildly. And so they have to be those uh, observations, uh, which lead then to those explanations, have to be based on what we already know. If we take a look at the picture, we can see that there are several people dressed in coats. Logically, we can say that it's cold out. Now, your imagination, which I know you all love to use, and that is fantastic. It is an important element in scientific investigations. It helps scientists to design the experiments, to solve problems, to see patterns that maybe no one else has noticed. So that imagination does come into play. Okay, objective, subjective. We've touched on this a little bit. Objective is based on evidence. Scientific uh, reasoning relies on gathering and evaluating evidence. It is objective. Subjective is based on personal feelings. And of course, if we allow personal feelings to come into a scientific investigation, we are opening up ourselves to bias or error. So we try to keep that out. Okay, and this is where it's going to be fun. Pseudoscience versus science. You've done a little worksheet on this, so let's explain what this means. Pseudoscience is beliefs that make use of science but whose conclusions and predictions are not based on observations, objective reasoning, or scientific evidence. So we're allowing for bias. We're allowing for subjective reasoning. Science is based on empirical evidence, and we've got the data to back that up. So again, pseudoscience may make use of scientific data, but the conclusions are based on subjective reasoning. And so, and look at what pseudo means. If we look at our prefixes that we've worked with, pseudo means false. So it's false science. So, non-scientific ways of knowing. Understanding other aspects of the world require training outside of science, like philosophy, the meaning of life, reasons for historical events, appreciating works of art, music, those can't be explained or taught through science. So science and its methods, again, are characterized by an ordered approach to learning. Um, this relies on objective analysis of the data, careful observation, scientific investigations, and logical reasonings. All right. 
That is your video lecture for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Short, sweet, and to the point. As always, thanks.